in a warning, you have only a few words. Um, and so, you know, if it's funny, forget it is often the, the phrase that's used in this context. It has a few problems associated with it. One is that it's telling you what not to do, which is you know, generally not where you want to begin. But added to that, and a challenge for communication, we found that in 90% of cases, people got through and there were no consequences. Lots of people in the area are very self-sufficient. They, they do their own thing and they have their own ways of, of telling um, when they think a flood's going to come and they go looking for their own sources of information. Here we are thinking that it's childish behaviour or people are going out of their way to do the wrong thing when really, is it a sign of a resilient community? These are people who are maybe going to check on pets or check on their house. So there's a whole range of reasons why people would travel through flood water. That's going to make me think differently around how I craft that messaging. As a researcher, I could sit here and say what I would want to do is challenge some of those views that people have about how benign drive through flood water is. But if I were in the emergency services, you know, you can't afford to say to people, it's okay to drive through sometimes, but not other times. Taking on board uh, some of the information that's been published by Mal and her team, it can really help guide our thinking on how we can be more nuanced in the way we communicate. What we've tried to do is incorporate messaging that's not negative, that actually provides some information that can help people make the decision. This is certainly something we need to continue to have discussions about. We need to continue to research and to understand and to work through ways that we can better connect and communicate with, with people.